just about to pack this one off to uh, send uh, to California. It's the last one I have, so I uh, thought I'd just do a quick video showing you it and how it works, how I made it. It's a, uh, a story-based automaton. Uh, let me just show you. It's called uh, Sid Embraces Anarchism, and it's got four uh, scenes. First of all, the dog looks at the man. Then the dog uh, wheeze on the man's leg. And then the man looks around wondering what's happened. Uh, first of all, you think perhaps, uh, or probably, Sid is the man, being an anarchist. But when you watch the action, you just begin to wonder if, in fact, Sid is the dog. His tail's wagging. He certainly, uh, certainly seems to be embracing his anarchism. It's all based on a Geneva wheel. It's got three, uh, dis uh, four distinct phases. Uh, first of all, we have uh, an odd gear size, or ge gear ratio. Uh, that disconnects turning the crank from the action, so the same thing doesn't happen at the same place in the crank all the time. Sort of adds to the magic a little bit. I've... Um, done another video on Geneva wheels which you can find if you subscribe or in my uh, channel. The cam followers then, I'm trying to make it as compact as possible um, and the cam followers, I'll show you how they work because it's not absolutely straightforward really. Uh, we've got the uh, cam, this one, uh, we'll look at the one for the tail which is the one that's on the uh, the first wheel it's the only one that's running continuously so you've got the uh, the cam running and then you've got the cam follower it's got a wheel and then of course you've got the cam follower there and there's the hinge okay here's the top problem is of course with gravity this thing's not going to touch the cam as it rotates so we need a counterweight so that we've got a a brass wire coming up here and then hinged from the this is the top hinged from the top we've got another lever there with a with a steel weight on it black steel weight this is pushing down this is pulling up then and that pulls the wheel against it and then when it pulls down we have a uh, lever there and that's the one that then goes and does the action and it's the same all the way through it the four different cams all have the same setup they're quite uh, thin wood what have i what i've done i made it at a beach which is quite strong and also i've doubled it up so it's it's two layers of beach it helps with making it and also makes it an awful lot stronger so first of all we've got the tail which is on the front axle continuous movement pretty simple the tail if we uh, just have a look here I'll show you it's simply a uh, a brass rod that's coming off the uh, cam follow as I showed you straight through to the tail going backwards and forwards and then the other actions are all based on the Geneva wheel so the advantage of the Geneva wheel is you get very quick movements and then stasis until the next scene comes around and it moves again and seeing as this has the four actions the looking by the dog uh, the lifting the leg then the man looking and then one with no action it comes into four nice scenes so we've got four cogs on the uh, on the uh, geneva wheel let me just show you how the different actions work now then so the dog's head basically he's got a why wire coming through there and then a lever coming down it's on the side so this rod is then just pulling and rotating the head fairly simple the tail we talked about and the leg lifting that's more difficult uh, there what we have we have a, um, a cam so the control rods pulling the cam down but then we have what a curved rod there and simply what happens is that when this rotates it pushes this rod and that pushes the leg out 
can see it happening. There we are. It's just the rod pushing the, uh, the curved rod pushing the leg out, and then the leg falls back when it comes back. So all uh, fairly simple. Right, I think that's about it really. The man, sorry, the man's again pretty simple. It's just a rod going through his back to the head again off the, uh, the same cam followers. He's made of um, lime wood, carved out of lime wood. His head's actually uh, beech wood, a lot harder. Same with the dog actually, the head, the head is beech wood and the ears, but the body is, is lime wood made in two halves. Now we've got one here, just showing uh, the inside and the leg. Good, I'd better go and uh, package him up and get him in the post now. Take a couple of weeks to get to the States from here, but they usually arrive in good shape. Packing's always a challenge. Uh, always wires and bits sticking out. Uh, the main danger though comes from the, uh, the figures on top. The, uh, the actual mechanism is very sound, but these are clearly a bit more exposed. I do consider transport when I make them. For instance, the uh, the figures here are, have got brass pins holding them onto the uh, base, so it makes them a lot stronger. Uh, but even so, we have to be careful how we package them to make sure they get there in one piece. I don't want them back broken. So, first of all, I'm going to uh, just support the people a little bit. Things like the head are quite loose, you see, just on a brass wire and here. So I usually do that by uh, wrapping some tissue paper, kitchen paper really, round them, just for a bit of gentle support. Mainly to support the head there. Just wrap it round like a mummy. Right, on the way. Right, but now what I want to do is just try and prevent any injury from compression. So I use this uh, this like honeycomb board. It's very light but very strong cardboard. Took me a long time to find it, but I did manage to source it eventually. Sometimes you get furniture, IKEA furniture, for instance, sort of packed with it, which is very handy if you can find that. What I'm going to do is put one bit each side there just to form a sort of a hard frame around uh, the automaton. But first of all, I just want to protect. Jiggling around, I get some even softer uh, kitchen towel and just push it in between the various uh, cam followers and things just to stop them rattling about in the transit. Just have to be careful not to damage any wires and good just cushion everything put it on again now that round like what I'll do is just make a hole in there Concentration on my face. It's quite difficult. Now then, the only problem is it can still get crushed that way. It can't get crushed that way so easily, or that way, but this way it can. So I'm going to stick two more bits of cardboard on. Good, got a firm little unit there now. Super job. Now what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of uh, tissue back in there now, just to really get those firmed up a bit. Excellent. Right, so now that's uh, fairly nice. So I'm going to, to uh, cover it bubble pack now and put it in a box. So uh, I'll go and do that 
elsewhere. There's not enough room here to get the roll out. Just got somebody favouriting my uh, things on my Etsy store. Right. So here we are, all wrapped up now in bubble packs. So it should, if it is dropped heavily, it should take a bit of the G-force out of it. Got the box that pack, which it fits in quite neatly. And then I've got a bit of paperwork that goes with it. A little bit of a thing saying thank you. A little bit of an artist write-up. Okay, I'm about making it. Now there's just a few bits and bit of space in there now. Keep getting this, mainly probably from Amazon, but it's quite good. Sort of the latest packaging which just goes down the side. Don't it too tight, but we want to just sort of plump it out so that there's no real spare space to get compressed. Now then. There we are, all ready to go. Just need to weigh it, buy the postage for it, fill out the customs forms, send it on its way to its new owner. Hopefully all in one piece. Great, thanks for watching. Do subscribe if you can, if you haven't already, if you liked it. See you next time.